The last objection was sustained. Ma'am, uh, at some point, you do remember that you uh, had the knife in your hand, correct? I don't remember that part. Do you remember at some point indicating to this jury that you knife dropped the knife? Do you remember saying that? I do remember that, yes. So if you dropped the knife, where did you drop it from, if not your hand? Presumably my hand. I just don't remember gripping it. Did I ask you whether or not you had gripped it? That's what I took it as. No, did I ask you whether or not you were gripping the knife, ma'am? You didn't use those words specifically. Right. I asked you whether or not the knife was in your hand. Do you remember that? Um, I don't remember you wording it that way. Did you drop the knife? Yes, I did. Did you tell that to the jury? Yes, I did. Did you tell them that you screamed, right? Yes, I did. So then the knife was in your hand, right? Yes, it was. And this issue about gripping has nothing to do with it, does it? Um, I would think it would. Uh, do you think how strongly you were gripping it is important to this case? I wasn't talking about the strength of the grip, just well, that no, I gripped I am. it. I'm asking you that just now. That was the question. Will you repeat that? Do you think that how strongly you were gripping it is important to this case? I wouldn't know. Well, you're the one that brought this up about not gripping it. You seem to think that's important. Why do you think that's important? You did have the knife in your hand, right? Yes. It was after the shooting, according to you, right? Yes. And you previously had seen that knife in the bedroom, right? Um, I don't recall. I think it was at one point, but I know it was definitely in the bathroom, but it may have gone to the bedroom. I'm not sure. And you did <laughs> drop the knife, right? Yes, I did. And after dropping the knife, you took it with you, right? Um, what a world. Took it where? I don't know. I'm asking you. Where did you take it? I have no idea. You, 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 don't, you don't remember? You said you dropped the knife, right? Yes, I remember that. When the jury asked the question about items, you indicated that you took certain items. Do you remember saying that? Yes. And you said the gun, right? I remember the gun. Right, and a number of other items that you took, right? Um, just the, the items I remember are... The items I remember are my luggage, of course, and I remember the rope and I remember the gun. I don't remember having the knife at any point after I was a little more lucid. Ma'am, you were wearing shoes that day when you got to Mr. Alexander's house, right? When I arrived, yes. Uh, when we took a look at, if you take a look at exhibit 162, you're wearing socks, right? Yes. So you took your shoes too, didn't you? Um, I was without my shoes when I Pardon? realized when I realized what was going on in the car. I didn't have my shoes anymore. So you're saying that you left your shoes behind? Is that what you're saying? I left them somewhere. And now, I'm not asking you if you left them somewhere. Are you saying that you left your shoes behind at Mr. Alexander's home? I don't remember what happened to my shoes. I just know that I didn't have shoes when I realized that I didn't have shoes. You also took your socks off before you left the house, didn't you? I don't remember. Well, do you remember indicating that you were barefoot when you were driving? Yes. So you must have taken your socks off in the house, right? Could have been anywhere. It could have been anywhere, not necessarily the house. The knife, where you said you heard a sound, right? When you dropped it, right? Yes, I heard it cling on the tile. And so you're saying now, the way you're saying it is that you dropped it in the bathroom, right? I believe it was the bathroom, yes. And you're saying that you believe it was in the bathroom because there was a sound of tile, correct? That's correct. And, um, you have no recollection whatsoever about picking it up afterwards, do you, according to you, right? No, I screamed and I don't remember anything after. You just remember the scream and then away you went, right? In, yeah, I guess my memory. You remember screaming, right? Yes, I do. And you remember nothing else, right? Nothing immediately after that, that's correct. Uh, actually, it was for many hours, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, the next thing that you say that you remember is stopping on the side of the road, right? Yes. You don't remember gassing up or anything, right? You told the jurors you don't remember anything else, right? There's some vague memories. But I understand that, but generally what you told to the jurors in response to the question was you don't remember anything, right? Objection, argumentative. She just explained she had vague memories. 
It wasn't that black and white, but in general, there's a huge gap there. And you indicated that it was the side of the road where you finally sort of started to come out of whatever fog you were in, right? Somewhat, yes. And you don't know which way you were driving, right? Objection beyond the scope of the question. Um, by that point, I didn't know which direction I was driving in. And you indicated to the jurors that you were around or short of the Nevada border um, by the side of the road in the desert when you finally <coughs> started to know what was going on, right? I'm going to object to the approach. You may. told this jury about pulling off the side of the road, correct? Yes. And you indicated that you have very vague memories, or hardly any memories at all, from leaving the house until you get to this area outside of the desert, right? That's right. And this area is near the um, Arizona-Nevada border, right? I don't know where I was. Well, you got in your car and you drove after that, didn't you? Yes. And you drove towards Hoover Dam, right? Um, I don't know where I was driving toward, but it would, I did eventually reach Hoover Dam. Right. And how much time did it take you to get to Hoover Dam from where you cleaned up? Objection, Carlos. Respectful issues. Sorry, you said you remember. Several to me answer. Well, um, I remember driving in the sun for a little ways. The sun was in my eyes, but by the time I reached the dam, it was dark, so I don't know how long it took. I'm, I'm not asking you about driving into the sun. I'm asking you about the time that you stopped by the side of the road. You told the jury that you did, remember? Yes, I did. You got rid of the gun. You told them, right? Yes. You got rid of the clothing, right? Um, I believe I did. Yeah, that's what you told them, though, right? Yes. 
And so at that point, man, when you were at that road, you continued driving to a point that you got to Hoover Dam, right? Yes, and I need to correct my last answer. I don't remember what I did with the clothes. Well, all right, so, but you did get rid of the gun. If you didn't get rid of the clothing, you do remember telling us that you got rid of the gun, right? I do remember that. And then you did continue driving on, and you came to Hoover Dam, right? Yes. And then you continued driving, right? Yes. Now, and, and before that, from the time you left the house until you got to the side of the road, you did indicate that maybe you were driving into the sun, is what you told us, right? Um, at one point, yes, I think it was. And during this trip, between the time that you didn't know what was going on, you left the house, until you got to the side of the road, you put gas in the car, didn't you? Yes, I did. So you, this fog had lifted enough so that as you're driving along, you do know what's going on, right? Um, I don't know what you mean. Because well, there might you have know, been some the car sense. needs gasoline, right? Um, if it needed gas, I would have put gas in it. Well, no, you just told me, ma'am, just now that you did put gas in the car, didn't you? I don't have a specific memory of gassing up, but if it needed the gas, then I would have put the gas in it. Ma'am, didn't you just tell me right now that we talked about the fog, you talked about certain images, stopping by the side of the road, and then I asked you, isn't it true that in between there, you put gas in the car and you said yes? I did say that. And so you did put... You were cognizant enough while you were driving through this fog that you were able to look at a gas gauge, weren't you? Presumably. Well, no, not presumably. Why would you be putting gas in the car if it didn't need it, right? That's correct. And you used the gas cans, didn't you? I don't remember. You don't remember, you do remember putting gas, but you don't remember what, you, what the method of delivery was? I don't remember putting gas, I'm presuming I did. Just like I'm presuming everything else about June 4th that we know are facts, I just don't have memory of those things. You're, you're presuming that you did, but that's not what you just told us, is it? I didn't say that specifically. No, you didn't. You said, yes, I did put gas in the car, right? Right. And when you got to, and it came from the gas can, didn't it? I don't. She already said she didn't know. The stain. The items that you told us that you got rid of, or that you told the jury, included the gun, right? Correct. Um, you also don't know what happened to the clothing, right? That's right. And if we go back to the scene, um, one of the things that we know, and that we talked about to the jury about, was this, this camera. Do you remember that? Yes. You did leave the camera behind, right? Yes. But there were deleted images, right? Yes. And one of the deleted images that was on there was Exhibit 162, right? Yes. You did take the rope, right? Yes. And the knife, you said that you heard it clank, so you're, you believe that that was dro dropped in the bathroom, right? That's right. Ma'am, everything that we've talked about that has anything to do with the crime, which is what we've talked about, you somehow, um, in this fog of yours, manipulated, didn't you? Objection, argument. Sustained. Well, you did touch the camera, right? In this fog, right? I believe I did. Right, because of, of where it was found, right? And you did delete the images, didn't you? I... Overruled. Maybe some, or all, I don't remember. You deleted photographs. How about that? I probably answered. I probably did, but I don't remember. I'm not asking you if you remember. I'm asking you whether or not you deleted them. Yes or no? Then the answer. If she doesn't remember, she can't answer the question despite his insistence. Rephrase the question. Ma'am, I'm not asking you whether you remember. I'm asking you whether or not, based on what you know about this case, you deleted the certain photographs, didn't you? Objection, Your Honor. Like a foundation she had a memory. Oh, well, to me, I guess I did. You guess you did, meaning you believe somebody else may have done it, right? That doesn't okay. mean that. Argumentative. Oh, well. Do you believe somebody else did it? No. Uh, also, in addition to that, this knife that inflicted these injuries, um, you believe that you dropped it, right? Yes. And 
you also believe that you moved it, though, right? I believe I did. Yeah, you've indicated to other people that you moved it, right? I believe, I indicated that I believed I did. Well, you said that you moved that item, too, didn't you? <coughs> you didn't say believe, you said, I moved it. I don't think I said that. Um, you tested, with regard to this particular issue, did you talk to any uh, individuals that were assisting in your case? For example, a psychologist or somebody with a master's in social work, a social worker? Yes. And you indicated certain things to them, right? That's right. And you indicated that... Approach, <coughs> please. Sustained. You also indicated that to the jury that you went to Utah, didn't you? Yes. And you met with an individual by the name of Brian Burns, right? Yes. Where did you fill up with gas? Um, I don't remember. Do you remember whether or not you used a credit card or a debit card? I don't remember. One of the things that you do remember, though, is that you used a gun, right? Um, on June 4th, yes. Yes, you did use a gun, didn't you? And it was in your hands, right? Yes. One of the other things that you indicated uh, as part of uh, your statement to the jury was that it was in a holster. Do you remember saying that? I remember saying at one point it was in a holster. All right. You also indicated it was in a box at another time, didn't you? Um, I don't remember indicating that. Well, then you indicated um, when you were being asked the questions that maybe it wasn't in a holster. Do you remember saying that? I remember saying maybe it was, maybe it wasn't on June 4th, I don't recall. Well, initially you did say that it wasn't holstered, didn't you? It was at one point. Right, and in, so as you sit here today and you think about it, which is it? Was it in a holster or was it in a box? Well, at that moment I didn't have time to sit and examine it. I just grabbed it. I reached up. I didn't even get that high. I just reached my arm up and grabbed it. I understand that you just reached up and grabbed it. I want to know whether or not it was in a holster or not. I can't tell you that. Um, even though you did indicate previously that you thought it was in a whole story. Uh, objection mischaracterizes her testimony and argument. If he can't testify for her and argue against him. Restate your question. You did tell us before that the gun was in a holster, didn't you? At one point it was in a holster, and it was also not in a holster. So I've, I saw it a few occasions. One point it was in a holster, one point it wasn't. I'm not asking you to give me this long answer. I'm asking you, isn't it true you told us in response to a question that the gun was in a holster when you grabbed it. Do you remember saying that? Objection. Ask and answer and mischaracterizes her testimony. Overruled. You may answer. I remember saying that I don't recall if it was in the holster when I grabbed it. That's what you remember now, right? That's what I remember saying, yes. Right. And, and again, we, are you having any memory problems today? Not that I'm aware of. Well, who, again, who else would be aware of you having any many memory problems other than you? Objection. Um, well, you seem to imply that I am, so maybe I'm not. Asked, no, I'm not implying anything. I want you to tell me whether or not you're having any memory problems right now. Well, I've already answered that. I said not that I'm aware of. So when not that I'm aware of means no to you, is that what we're saying? If we're um, going to... Objection, ask and answer. The other thing is that you indicated that you, at some point, you bought a 9 millimeter handgun after you killed Mr. Alexander, right? Yes. You remember that question by the jury, right? Yes. And one of the things that uh, you indicated with regard to that 9 millimeter handgun was that you bought it for personal reasons, right? That's correct. Personal safety reasons, right? Yes. And one of the, and the reason that 
that you're, you were cautious or worried about your safety was because you were going to go on a camping trip, right? That was just one of the reasons. No, right? but that's what you told us, though, right? Yeah, that's Mr. Mr. Well, we'll I told them, I told you that that was one of the reasons. Yeah, that, that's, and that was the main reason. And do you remember that you also told them that um, this trip that you were going to go on required you to have a handgun because it was going to only be guys? Do you remember telling us that? No, it was not required. It was just something that made me feel safer. Ma'am, do you remember saying that you wanted to take the gun, the 9mm, on this camping trip because it was only guys? Do you remember saying that? Um, yes, that I knew of. Only guys were going well, so far. We were still organizing the trip. That you knew of. We're not asking you to tell us anything about what every, anybody else knows. We're asking you to tell us what you know of. You don't have to add that on there. Do you understand that? Okay. Can answer the questions he poses. Ma'am, didn't you tell us that you bought the gun in anticipation of a camping trip where there were only going to be men, right? I think we're on three times on this one now. Hold the vote. Answer the question. I remember indicating that that was one of the reasons I purchased a handgun. And you also said that when you were on this camping trip that you, were, that you never know what may happen and you just wanted to be cautious, right? That, but I never went on the camping trip. I'm not asking you if you went on the camping trip. You phrased it that way. Ma'am, isn't it true that I asked you about whether or not you said you never know what may happen and you have to be cautious. You used the word cautious, right? Yes. And you were worried about going on a camping trip with a bunch of guys and what they might do because according to you, they drink beer or, or whatever it is that they drink. Do you remember saying that? Yeah, I just wanted to be careful. Yeah. You really didn't need to go on this camping trip at all, did you? No. Objection, the scope. And this gun that you were buying... And this trip that was involved, there were, you finally, you also told us that there were ladies that were going also, right? Um, we were trying to organize it, so that was a possibility, but so far I was the only lady on board with the trip. And even though you've had, you said that you had this, um, you told the jury that you had this problem at, or this experience with Mr. Alexander, that that's the reason that you wanted to take the gun, right? Yes, Sustained. So the fact that you had been involved with Mr. Alexander and the issue involving Mr. Aleg Alexander, that was one of the reasons why you were cautious, right? Objection. Mr. testimony is the same exact question. Approach, please. Part of the reason that you were cautious was because you had previous bad experiences with Mr. Alexander and physical violence. Yes, that was one of the reasons. And one of the other things that you told us was that um, you've read uh, the Book of Mormon, right? Yes. And you told us that you've read it from cover to cover, right? Yes. And in fact, this interest in the Book of Mormon, you also told us, started back in, uh, what, September of uh, 2006, correct? Correct, and I need to correct my last answer. I didn't read it cover to cover. I just read to the end of the Book of Mormon, but they have a huge index in the back that I didn't read. Sorry. But you're saying that you read the content of it, right? Of the book, yes. And um, this interest started back in September of 2006, right? Yes. And you indicated that you, the way you phrased it was that, well, you, try, you tried to follow the mandates in the Book of Mormon, right? Um, 
I don't know that I indicated it that way, but yeah, that was that would have been a goal of mine. Sure, you told us a thing about coffee. You know, that was one of the things that uh, that uh, the religion indicated was something that shouldn't be engaged in, right? That's correct. It's and not you tried. I guess the point is, is you try to be a good Mormon, right? Um, I did my best to appear that way. And one of the things that you also told us, or told the jury, was that, well, even though you did your best, you followed guidance from certain people, right? That's correct. One of the people that you followed guidance from was Mr. Alexander, right? Yes. And that was, according to you, with regard to the issue of sex, right? Yes. Chastity was the term that was used, right? Yes. And based on what he told you, you acted in a in conformity, or you acted in a certain way, right? Yes. But you, of course, though, independently read the Book of Mormon, right? That's correct. And the Book of Mormon, though, does talk about um, lying, doesn't it? Yes. And in fact, Nephi 934, are you familiar with it? Um, not off the top of my head, no. Well, let me mark something and see if this is something that you come across. <laughs>
Ma'am, you remember the jurors asking you about this issue involving the Book of Mormon, right? Yes. And do you remember saying that you've read the book from beginning to end, right? That's correct. And this Book of Mormon, you've said, has guided your life, right? I didn't say that. Well, didn't you say that as part of the Book of Mormon, you don't uh, engage in drinking caffeine anymore, right? No, I said that that wasn't part of the Book of Mormon. That was, that was what? That I can't hear you. I said that was not part of the Book of Mormon. It's doctrine that came out later. It, you're talking about the Doctrine and Covenants, right? Um, it's not, coffee isn't specified in the Doctrine and Covenants, but the Word of Wisdom was clarified more in the 20th century, I think it was, and that's when coffee came into that verbiage. And this is all intertwined with the Mormon faith, right? It is. And this is the faith that you try to follow, right? Yes. And that's what you told the jury, right? Yes. It includes um, the, the Pearl of Great Price, right? Doesn't it include that? It does. These are part of the books involved in the Mormon faith, right? Yeah, it's all part of the canon. Right, and you've read them, right? Yes. And you've attempted to incorporate them in your life, right? Yes. And this is at least part of the problem that you've had involving the vow of chastity, right? I would say that, yes. Yes. But these books that we've talked about, specifically the Book of Mormon, Nephi... Um, 934 also talks about other issues, doesn't it? Lying. It does talk about lying, doesn't it? You said Nephi? Nephi, right, 934. That's first Nephi? Yes, Nephi, 934. Why don't you take a look at Exhibit 524 and see if you um, recognize it. This is second Nephi. Pardon? This is second Nephi. Yes. It does talk about lying, right? Yes. And it lays it out in no uncertain terms, right? Yes. Okay, why don't you tell us, based on looking at that, what the mandate is involving lying? Um, that more or less you're condemned to hell. For lying, right? Yes. Okay, I'm going to have that back. Even though you tell us that you follow the Book of Mormon, really, and that's what created a problem for you and Mr. Alexander, you really don't follow the Book of Mormon when you, when you told that to the jury. You really don't follow it, do you? Objection. Well, you're talking about what time period? Well, I'm talking about your life, ma'am. This is what we're talking about. Isn't it true that you told the jury that this book sort of governs the way you style your life, right? I didn't say that. No, it isn't, doesn't govern your life? Isn't that what you, we just talked about? Yes, you mischaracterize your testimony. Overruled. You mean, can you repeat that? Doesn't the book govern your life? Don't you run your life according to what it lays out? Well... It's not a yes or no question. I mean, answer, so if you'd let me. I'm asking you whether or not you use this as a guide. Isn't that what you told us in your everyday life? When you, the jurors asked the question, you said, yeah, that's what I use. And you told us that you've read it from cover to cover, right? I wasn't asked that way, and I, wasn't a I didn't answer that way. You did tell us that you read it cover to cover, didn't you? Yes. Chapter at a time, right? Yes. That in it, it didn't have anything specific about chastity, right? Um, the word chastity may be in there, but it wasn't broken specific. down specifically. There weren't anything specific that you could sort of hang on to to guide your life, right? Not in that book alone. Right. That's correct. And you're implying there are other books, right? There are other books. And there are other books that you read, right? Um, in a different, afterward, yes, there is another book that I read. You, I didn't get the first part. What did you say? Um, for example, the other books would be like the one you read to Desiree Freeman. That's a book that I discovered in 2009. So there are other materials out there, right? Yes. And you said that you've read those, right? I believe I've read the bulk of them. I don't know if I've read them all cover but to cover. If we're just going to, because of the time restriction that you put on it, let's just restrict ourselves to the Book of Mormon and back in 2006, 2007, 2008. As part of your indoctrination to, to become baptized, you're required to know about these things, right? Um, yeah, I think you're quizzed on them before you're baptized. Well, sure, and one of the things is you don't lie, right? 
I don't remember if that was one of the questions for baptism. Well, no, I'm not asking if that's one of the questions in baptism. One of the questions in baptism is if you're going to follow the, the tenets of the Book of Mormon, right? Yes, So, when it's to your convenience, ma'am, for example, the vow of chastity, then you say, this isn't specific enough. But, but when it comes to something like lying, then it doesn't apply to you. Isn't that what we're looking at? Can I answer the question? The objection of argumentative mischaracterizes her testimony. Right. Ma'am, one of the other things that uh, you indicated to us was that there was a fight between uh, you and Mr. Alexander uh, on the eve of the Hanasupai trip. Do you remember telling us that? Yeah, the morning of, yes. The morning, sure. And the way that that fight started, actually, though, was because Mr. Freeman was trying to lighten the load that you were attempting to carry, right? Um, I don't think that was part of the fight. Well, that's how this got started, didn't it? That's how Mr. Freeman interpreted it, because he wasn't in the bathroom when the fight actually exploded. So, you, so you're saying that Mr. Freeman had absolutely nothing to do with the fight that took place between you and Mr. Alexander in the bathroom that morning? Nothing to do with it? I would say that. Pardon? Well, maybe indirectly, but not the subject matter. No, 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 you said it didn't have anything to do with it. So, for example, the fact that it started downstairs and you started to cry and went to the bathroom had nothing to do with the fact that Mr. Alexander then went behind you. Had nothing to do with it. I didn't cry oh, yeah. downstairs. So you were happy downstairs then, right? I didn't say that either, no. You were unhappy downstairs then. I was a little, like, discombobulated because all my stuff was gone out of my backpack, and then I thought, where is it? And so they said, it's over here, and I said, oh, okay. So I just took it upstairs because I needed to brush my teeth. So dis discombobulated, is that the same thing as confused? Somewhat, yeah. Is that the same as being in a fog? Well, I'd just woken up, so maybe I was a little bit... And is, is that the same thing as having memory issues? Or is that something different? That's different. I would classify that as different. Okay, so you, you may have been a little confused at that point, right? Is that what you're saying? Um, yes, I was confused at first. And then you're saying that Mr. Alexander came upstairs and there was a fight that ensued, right? That's correct. Totally unrelated to this issue involving the backpack, right? Um, unrelated, the subject matter of the fight was unrelated. It was unrelated at all. The subject matter, unrelated means unrelated in terms of su subject matter, space, and time. It had nothing to do with the argument that was downstairs, right? Um, there was no argument downstairs, but I wasn't, like, happy or thrilled. I think I might have appeared irritated, but I didn't say anything. I just took the backpack and went upstairs, so it could have precipitated his posture of how he approached me in the bathroom, but he got really mad when he saw me taking everything out because I was looking for my toothbrush. So there was an argument downstairs is what you said, right? I don't think any angry words were exchanged. I wouldn't call it an argument. Well, ma'am, didn't you just say that like 30 seconds ago that there was an argument downstairs? You just said that. I said the opposite 30 seconds ago. Could, could you read back that portion, please? Her response. In 
you're saying, Mr. Alexander, came upstairs and there was a fight that ensued, right? You said that's correct? Your Honor, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Could you read it again? And then you're saying that Mr. Alexander came upstairs and there was a fight that ensued, right? Answer, that's correct. Before that. It was before that, correct. Her response. I was a little bit combobulated because all my stuff was down out of my backpack. I said, where is it? They said, it's over here. I said, okay, so I took it upstairs because I needed to brush my teeth. How about after that? After that? Where the word argument was used by her, if in fact she did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was unrelated at all. Unrelated means unrelated in terms of subject matter, space, and time. It had nothing to do with the argument that was downstairs, right? Answer, it was that argument downstairs. Well, we'll go on. So you're saying there was no argument downstairs. I'll take that. You'll say that, right? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't classify it as an argument. It was just a discussion so I could figure out where my stuff went. And in terms of being downstairs, wasn't it actually Mr. Freeman that was going through your backpack, right? It was, I don't know, it was already repacked by the time I woke up. It was what? It had already been repacked by the time I woke up. So you were here when he testified, right? Yes. So you know what he said, right? I'm not asking you to tell me what he said, but you know what he said, right? I have a general recollection of what he said. But you were here, though, correct? Yes. And so you go back upstairs, right? And you're saying that that's when the argument really started, right? Yes. And the reason that that was a sort of a changing point in the relationship for you was because Mr. Alexander said something to you, right? Yes. And the words, according to you, that he said were, fuck you, right? Yes. And you said, well, I couldn't see that individual being the father of my children, right? Anybody who could use that language, right? It was, yeah, it was hard to envision that from that point on. Sure. That's what you said, right? Yes. But you use those words, too, don't you? I have, yes, many times. So, for example, when we were listening to the tape back on May 10th of 2008, that's the word that you used in that conversation, didn't you? Right. Objection, Your Honor, to be honest, what was your question? Sustained. You claimed that you were offended by the word, fuck you, right? By the... I'm going to object to still be honest, what was your question? Approach, please. So, ma'am, it's true, though, that you would use that word yourself, right? Yes. Right? Yeah, I've used it. And, in fact, you used it back on May 10th of 2008, right? Yes, I did. The other thing, ma'am, is that, you know, is that... With regard to this issue of chastity, you said that you took your guidance from Mr. Alexander, right? The specifics, yes. Yes, sure. That's actually not true, is it? Objection, argument. Sustained. 
ma'am, isn't it true that you knew it was wrong and you said, I don't care, even if it's wrong involving the sex, you're going to do it anyway? Um, at one point regarding when we would go all the way with vaginal sex, it reached a point where we did say that, yes. No, you said it, right? Not, not we. I'm not asking about what Mr. Alexander said. I'm asking, isn't it true that you said, even though you know it's wrong, not ir ir irrespective of what Mr. Alexander said, even though you know it's wrong, you said, I'm still going to do it anyway. Objection. Okay. I think I, yeah, something about if it's wrong, I don't want to be right. I think I used that right. verbiage. So when you keep telling us that Mr. Alexander was your person who actually taught you and that the reason you were doing some of this, doing this stuff was because he was the one that was telling you, you knew it was wrong independent of that, didn't you? What, that we were going all the way, yes, I knew that was wrong. Well, no, you knew, right. And you said, don't want to be right, right? Yeah, I did eventually say that. One of the other things that you know, ma'am, is that you claim that, uh, when you were asked by the jury about your failure to call 911, do you remember answering that question? That's correct. And you were asked about that, and you said, well, it relates back to an experience that I had with Bobby Juarez. Do you remember telling us that? Yeah, it did in part. I remember saying that. Yeah, and you said that there was, at a point in your relationship with Mr. Juarez, there was a point when um, apparently there was an, a physical altercation between you and Mr. Juarez, right? Yes. And during this physical altercation, you got on the telephone and actually dialed 911, right? According to you. Yes. And you dialed 911, and according to you, the police called back, right? Yes, after he hung up the phone. Right. So he hung up the phone, but the police called back, right? Yeah, I think it was the 911 operator. Well, you're saying I think now, but previously you were certain that he called 911. Do you remember telling us that? I called 911. Or, or okay, you called 911. So you were certain you called 911, right? Pretty certain. I mean, it was chaotic, but I think I got 911. Well, I know that you're saying it's chaotic now, but do you remember in response to the juror's question that you said I called 911? Do you remember saying that? Correct. You didn't equivocate, did you? I'm sorry. You did not equivocate or show uncertainty when you answered that, did you? I did not. That I and so you called 911, and um, Mr. Juarez hung up the phone, according to you, right? Yes. And then there was a return call from the police department, right? I don't know who returned the call. He just said, shut up, they're going to call back. Well, okay, somebody called back, right? Yes. And you heard him talk about this issue involving you and him, right? Um, he didn't talk about our issues. Well, you said he convinced whoever was on the other end of the line that everything was all right. Do you remember saying that? Yes. And that as a result of that, the police didn't come out there, right? That's correct. And so you said, well, because of that, that's, one of, that's the reason I didn't call the police when Mr. Alexander, um, that you claim abused you, right? No, that's not what I said. Well... You did say that in response to the question by the jurors. Why didn't, you were asked, why didn't you call 911, right? Yes. And you said, well, I had this situation with uh, Mr. Juarez. Do you remember saying that? Um, yes. And so you're saying that just because of this situation that happened many years ago, that's the reason why you didn't call 911 when Mr. Alexander abused you, right? No, that might have been a small reason, but I gave a bigger reason for not calling 911. But that was part of the reason that you re told us about, right? You did connect the two together, didn't you? The question connected the two, so I answered it accordingly. No, I'm not asking about the question. You responded to the question, and you connected the two together, didn't you? her testimony. No, the question connected the two, and I responded to the question. Okay, so it, so in this case, you're, you're saying that your response was the fault of the question, not your response. Objection Well, did you or did you not connect the two in response to whatever the question was? Objection, ask and answer. 
If the question had mentioned both call the, both calls or the time I called Bobby, but I did on Bobby, but I didn't with Travis, then that's the reason I answered that. Ma'am, I'm not asking you that. I'm asking you whether or not you did tell us the story about Bobby Juarez and the 911 call. Objection. Mm -hmm. Ask and answer. Overruled. Yeah. And that was in part th that discussion was in part involving Mr. Alexander and the claimed physical abuse, right? Objection, Ms. Characterizes her testimony. She's repeatedly said it's related to the question. Overruled. You may answer the question. Will you repeat it, please? I'm sorry. Isn't it related? Isn't it true that you told it? That part of the reason you didn't call 911 was because of your prior experience with Mr. Juarez. That was part of the reason. And, but nothing really stopped you from calling 911, right? Objection argument. Rephrase. Did anything stop you from calling 911? Objection argument. Oh. Well, in the heat of the moment, yeah, Travis did. But Pardon? afterward, in the heat of the moment, Travis did. But afterward, I could have. Sure, you could have, right? Yes. And you didn't, though, right? That's correct. Um, you could have taken photographs, right? Yes. In fact, you took photographs of the injury to your finger that you suffered, according to you, at Casa Ramos, right? Yes, I did. And you told us that you suffered this injury. Is it breaking a margarita glass or is it against an item? Which of the two is it? I jammed it against a metal ledge as I was putting margarita glasses away. So it's all related. Okay. And so you could have taken, you remember leaving in April of 2008 to uh, go home, right? Yes. Moving. Do you remember that? Yes. Objection beyond the scope of the jury questions. Do you remember telling the jury that you moved back to um, Wairika in April of 2008? Yes. They asked you about that, right? Um, I don't remember if that was one of the questions, but that's what I said. And do you also remember that you told the jury in response to one of their questions involving the issue involving the injury to your neck? Do you remember talking to them about that? Yes. And this issue involving the injury to your neck, you could have taken pictures of that, right? Yes. In fact, you could have taken those pictures yourself, right? Yes. And because, in fact, you did it as late as June 3rd of 2008. You actually took pictures of your neck, right? My neck? Yes. Um, June 2008, I guess. June 3rd, 2008. Oh, yes, I did. And in fact, you were in a car when you took those photographs, right? Yes. Let me show them to you. Objection beyond the scope of the question. Approach, please.
Yes. And, but she didn't do that, right? No, I was ashamed of those. Now, one of the things that you told us was that during the attack, you actually went inside the closet, right? Um, when I was trying to run away from his attack, yes. You did go in the closet, right? Yes. And that uh, you went in and you shut the door, right? Yes. And when you shut the door, one of the things that you did was that you went up to get the gun, right? Yes. Do you remember telling this detective, Flores, that Mr. Alexander did not have a gun? Yes, I do. Yes, you asked him those questions. I was. You did tell him that, right? I did. That was a lie? Is that what you're saying now? Yes. But that was on June 10th of 2008, wasn't it? Yes. That was one day after the police found the body, right? Yes. That call was initiated by you, right? Yes. Um, the detective wasn't interviewing you per se. In other words, he didn't go to you and try to use his technique on you or anything, right? He actually calls for speculations beyond the scope of the jury question. I was. I assumed he was per an attorney I consulted with. But if you assumed he was, you were aware of what was going on and you weren't going to give him anything, right? I didn't want to tell him about his gun. I remember my heart started racing when he asked about it. So you say that on June 10th, you did say that the victim did not have a gun, right? Yes, I did. Let's take a look at uh, exhibits numbers. Let's start with number 70. You say that you're about, what, five, five and a half, right? Uh, five, five and a half or five, six, somewhere okay. between there. And you say that standing on the ground there, you can reach all the way to the top of that shelf, right? Um, not standing on the ground. I stand about eye level to the picture of his dad. I, I did not hear what you had to say, so it, eye level is where? Where the photograph is. Where, there. where the what? Where the photograph is. Up here? Yes. So you're saying that your eyes were straight across on that photograph, right? Yes. I don't know if it's the top or the bottom, but it's about eye level with the photo. Eye level means your eyes are right across from that, that photograph, right? Somewhat like that, yes. No, no, no. I, I would like a bit of certainty from you. Well, I can't give you certainty unless I'm standing in the closet. I'm not asking you to stand in the closet. I'm asking you 